Guys, welcome back to a new episode of the Bounty Riders podcast, episode 77, the last one before the end of the season, the minor rounds, of course, before we get into finals. Both of our teams have qualified. Of course, my brother is here with me. We'll get to that in a second. We're also going to be taking a look at today, the suspensions over the weekend, some big news. Also, we're going to be taking a look at the Melbourne Demons, our All-Australian predictions, and much more. So let's roll the intro and get straight into it. And then Rankin from the pocket, don't tell me! Oh, is that Rankin? Yeah. He's just got the license for a brothel. Um, well, I think Gather Round's going to be the um, <laughs> AFL <laughs> this next season. Gets at the handle at the back, Nick Dankos to get the prize home! He's done it! So guys, my brother's back in the team this week. He's been in a late inclusion. Oh well, no, I think you're always right, going to be coming over. But our two teams are on top of the ladder. I don't think we've ever seen this before in our lifetime. Well, no. yeah, I don't think we have actually. Nah, so um, it's a weird experience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, far out. We've never. We obviously were close. We we're talking about it just before we started. Um, the closest we've ever been to a Swan Sport Grand Final is 2014, mm. when the Swans made the Grand Final. Port Adelaide just lost to Hawthorne in the prelim. So I don't know. It's very interesting. I guess we can talk about that a little bit first. Who is the Premiership favourite right now? Because Brisbane were a couple of weeks ago and they've just dropped off and I don't know if they're going to be making top four. And without top four, it's going to seem pretty tough. Who would you say is the Premiership favourite? Oh, it's hard to go past the Giants at the moment, I think. The Giants and the Swans. Yeah. Imagine that if it was a oh, no. Sydney Derby in the final. That would be crazy. Um, I'd probably have to agree, although in saying that, it is going to be at the MCG. There's not going to be much of a crowd for a Giants team. Um, well, obviously. Um, it'd be interesting to see how they market it. I wouldn't mind seeing the Giants make it just on the marketing department, <laughs> just to see what they do with it. Well, the amount of corporate, corporate that will be there, but they'll, get, they'll still get 100. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd be very interested to see what happens. But at the moment, Carlton, Hawthorne, Bulldogs and Geelong are in the top eight from Victoria. Mm. Um, so I'd be interested to see what happens with that. And obviously, there's only basically nine teams now that can make the finals. Collingwood, they'd have to need a miracle. Have you seen the, yeah, what yeah. they have to do? Yep. So they have to get a combined uh, 200 points. They have to win by 100, basically. Then Carlton have to lose by 100. And then, or Hawthorne, I guess. And then they need, obviously, Fremantle to lose against Port Adelaide mm. to make the finals. So, basically, it's nine teams. We'll get to the tips a little bit later, but it's Fremantle have kind of lost the plot, really. I mean, they haven't really lost badly in the last three weeks, but they should have really been making finals. Well, yeah, if Frio don't make it, to be honest, I it's I just don't think it's like when you see some years that eighth just makes up the numbers. I don't think... I think if Carlton, Hawthorne, and the Dogs make it, that are below six or six and below. I don't think you can say this year has been that um, they're making up the numbers. I think everyone Do you think would be making up the numbers if they made it from here. Oh, uh, I'd say, I wouldn't say based on the game last week against the Giants. I'd say no either. I think every team that gets in there this year has some way of really troubling any team. Yeah, I think I, I agree. I think it's a very even sort of contest. I mean, obviously we've had teams that have been dominating at the start of the year, like the Swans and um, Geelong as well. They were like really good at the start of the year and they've kind of had a bad period, but then they've kind of jumped back up again. The Giants obviously um, had a really good start to the year, had a really poor mid-year, but then mm. have jumped up. Port Adelaide, pretty similar to the Giants, or even not, not the greatest start to the year, pretty poor mid-year, and then they've jumped up really nicely. The Brisbane Lions... Had a very poor start to the year. It's always been a, a lot of different stories as we've gone through. So mm. um, I think this year, more than anything, a team outside the top four, I think, can do it. I think uh, momentum has shown this year can be pivotal in their in form. But and I think anyone can really beat anyone at the moment. But I still think a top four spot, especially for an interstate team, is going to have to be the one, in yeah. my opinion. But yeah, I think um, looking at that, that's kind of our little finals predictor. I guess we we'll get to that more in the tips later. But the first thing I wanted to take a look at today was the, uh, just a couple of things about the suspension front. We'll talk about Dean Houston in a second. But the first one was Lucky Ash. He did get a one match ban for a dangerous tackle on Hayden Young. Um, he is going to challenge it. He Hayden Young didn't come off with concussion in the game, so that will go in Lucky Ash's favour. I don't think he'll get away with it though. No, the way that they're doing it now, there's pretty much no way he gets off. I don't However, think. we saw what his teammate Bedford and Cameron, mm. they did get away with it. Yeah, but I think also, um, 
I don't know. I think Lockie yeah. Ash, especially after the tackle as well, he pushed him yeah. on the ground. That probably won't make him look <laughs> any like, you know, oh, it was like an accident. Of, he pushed him down as well. I don't know if that will help him very much, but I'd be a little bit surprised if he got away with it. Yeah. Just being yeah. me. But let's talk about the Dan Houston hit because that's probably gonna, that's going to be the talk of the week. Um, Wayne Carey came out and said that it was a bump and it shouldn't, it sh- shouldn't be anything. Mm. Um, other people, Le Montagna, came out and said it should be about five weeks. You're a Port fan. Um, if... They miss if they win this. Well, they play this week. Then let's say they do finish top four or top two. Well, they've obviously got top four, but they play three finals. He would miss out on the grand final. Do you think he gets less than three weeks? Well, no. If he gets three weeks, he play. He plays. Um, he, he could That's play the final. That's what I'm saying. Do you think he gets three weeks, or do you think he gets? Yeah, four? he gets a minimum of three. Yeah. The AFL have said that they're pushing for five. And well, any more than four, he's screwed. He's screwed really. Yeah. So, I think that he'll probably get four. I think that's where it's going to sit. Mm. Um, the thing that will go in his favour is the fact that he didn't get Rankin high. Yeah. It's basically the act of bumping him and his head hitting the ground. Mm. But we know now, what, the last couple of years, as soon as you elect a bump, your innocence is basically gone. Yeah. No and, matter yeah. what. And an injury that happened to Rankin, I can't see him getting away with it by any means. Yeah. And he would like. Not going to make this a funny joke, but wouldn't it have been funny if it was Rochelle in a way? No, <laughs> no. basically. <laughs> it, it, been poetically, funny. it would have been like it would. <laughs> no, in a way, we're not going to start fucking throwing like that sort of <laughs> shit out here. Jesus but, Christ! No, um, it was a bad look. You can't do it anymore, and he is the only thing that's on his side is the fact he didn't get him high. Yeah. So if he if Port Adelaide are gonna well obviously gonna um, make a case. That's their whole that's the whole argument. They've it's just gonna be about where it was hit. Yeah, and he hit him just below in the chest. He was he lucky that that was the case because if he did get him high, it, it was a definite. Weeks. It was a definite five to seven weeks. It, yeah, and he would have definitely never played again this year. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I mean that's we'll move into that in a second with the Melbourne stuff. But yeah, I think Dan Houston's definitely gonna be off. I see. I think four. I think that's where it's gonna sit. Um, and the fact is, I know people are going to say, like, oh, I didn't get him high, so it should be fine. But, like I said, as soon as you elect a bump, it just takes all your innocence away. If he tackled him and hit him to the ground, or even even to the point of, like, hitting him with, like, with no... If his shoulder's not in, if he just goes and Tries almost body to, checks yeah. him, really, I think you'd be, uh, be okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'd be arguing to say, no, it's that should be fine. But, you know, I, I, it's not a good look for the game. No. It's not a good look. I mean... Um, We've obviously seen a lot of stuff about concussion this year, with with that sort of stuff, and that's just it's not gonna it's not gonna go in his favour, unfortunately. No, Port Adelaide and for him really. But like we've um, said all year, tribunal, um, the AFL, and whatever all the departments, they have all different ways of looking at it. Yeah, so it's, the yeah. AFL want five, the tribunal might give him three. Yeah, so. And I mean, if then the then the players as well, and the clubs can even just go to the appeals board and keep on going. Yeah, and take and, it to, uh, to court. be honest, they, at Port Adelaide, they probably I reckon they would if they get if he gets five weeks, that he will probably go to the appeals board and go and go as far as he can because Port Adelaide, if they want to go deep and get to grand final, I don't see Port Adelaide giving it a good shot without him in the team. Yeah, well, I think. Um, yeah, I think that that's probably what's going to happen. I actually have a video essay that I was supposed to get out this week, but I've been to it's that uh, Lockie Ash one. I may actually add to the video, um, but yeah, that's just another. I, I just want to talk about that sort of stuff, make a little video essay about the tribunal and that this year. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of decisions that have been very contentious. It's probably been the most confusing year that we've had on that front. When it's been such a great year for footy, mm-hmm. like so many great games, so many like ladder position changes and all that sort of stuff. That's been a real stain on the season. Mm. So I've, I was going to try and do that out this week, but I think I'll get that out next week, just on the finals by anyway. So I think that'll be pretty good. But I guess there's a little announcement we can make now, guys. Um, I will, We'll be doing our live stream for the Boundary Riders medal um, on the 30th of August, which is a Friday night. So it's the in between the bye, obviously, before the, the end of the season, the finals bye. Um, I think you can make that, hopefully. We're... Pretty much, We're yeah. pretty sure you'll yeah. be able to make pretty that. Pretty sure. But it's a Friday night. Um, that's definitely what definitely what's going to happen. So, um, 
we'll be doing a bunch of announcements throughout the videos this week and next week as well. But basically throughout the night, last year we did it and um, it was basically just me reading the votes out all night. It was a really good stream. Um, it was actually a pretty big one. I actually didn't think that many people would come and join because the, the channel was, what, a quarter of the size? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was crazy that you guys actually showed up and it's going to be bigger and better this year. We're going to make it um, a bunch of awards giveaway, uh, a bunch of awards. So we've got the goal of the year, the mark of the year. Um, they have to have been like called from us on stream. So I've got a couple that me and my brother are going to be looking at today um, to decide who's going to get that. And of course, if there's a massive moment in the last round that we stream, maybe we'll add another one and then another nomination. But we've got a couple up. And then, of course, we'll be giving away the Flog of the Year. Now, we've got one more nomination this week, but I don't know if, I don't think they'll get the Flog of the Year. But we'll have a look at the different nominations throughout the year. We'll be deciding that. And I think what we'll do is we'll pick two nominations, one each, and then we'll maybe put it to a poll to split the vote. Maybe that. Mm. I don't know. We'll see. We'll find a way to do it. But um, it, unless we both have the same nomination, then fuck it. That person's getting the flog of the year. But we'll give those away. Maybe do a couple of giveaways as well. Um, we'll also be giving away the um, uh, prizes for the winner of the tipping comp and the fantasy comp as well. I mean, if you guys... I think I think the tipping comp's done now. I think he's eleven vote eleven tips. No, I think he's eight actually. After the oh, okay, so unless yeah. so unless he like tipped everything wrong, well. he's basically <laughs> tied it up. So um, yeah, that's basically what will be happening in the live stream. And of course, like I've, I, I mean, I'm sure you guys who are watching this probably watched the review. Um, basically, we'll be doing similar to like how the brown light goes. We do the, the votes of every single game of the season, and then we'll have our second ever boundary riders medalist. So. Um, I think I've shown you a few times who's in front. I it's won't. Pretty close. I've I've seen the lot. Well, it was only a couple of weeks ago. You showed me the ladder, and it is close. Yeah. So I I don't think it will be the Brownlow medalist. I don't think so. Be interesting if it was, but I don't um, think it will be this year. I think the Brownlow medalist will be different. Yeah. But of course, that, this is way more important. Well, so, we, we actually don't give it to a midfielder just based on because he gets thirty five disposals and does no impact with it. Yeah, but I mean, it could still be a bit midfielder who wins it. Yeah, so. it can be still a <laughs> it could be. It could be. But we, we actually know. looked at the impact that it actually has on the game than the, it is on the stat sheet. Yeah, and I saw a couple of guys, people in the comments as well, so now the review's kind of growing as well. I've seen a lot of people like, you know, saying, oh, you know, I thought maybe this person deserved the vote. And I actually like that. It's like there's people actually engaging with the, the votes as well. So mm. I, I like that. I mean, I, I mean, that's up to you. I mean, if you think it's different, that's more than fine. Leave us a comment. Let us know down below or whatever. I think one of them was saying that Nick Martin deserved the vote last week and you were I was, I was that wondering one. you should have got one, but... No, I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you sent me the one for the Swans game and you were like, oh, well, it was three Sydney players. It was like, well... Yeah, in the second half. <laughs> After the actual whole game, no. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Alright, anyway, we'll move on. We'll talk a little bit about... Um, uh, in, sorry, just one last thing about that. Yeah, we'll be putting um, announcements throughout the next couple of weeks through the videos and stuff. So, if you see them, I think we'll probably do a poll on something. Um, if it is the goal of the year or the... Probably the goal and mark of the year, we'll probably do that. So, you guys can vote who's... Um, deserves it and like I said it has to be something that we saw on live stream it can't just be goal of the year and mark of the year because I mean make it somewhat ch out channel related yeah. I think it's probably just fair and maybe different I mean I think the mark of the year may even be the same as the mark of the year for the, in the AFL anyway but yeah we'll, we'll be announcing that throughout the throughout the um the next couple of weeks but let's move on and talk about the demons because they've had a failed year let's be honest you predicted only one it. predicted only the one person who predicted it yeah I think you, <laughs> when did you say they'd finish around 10th 11th or something I think I put them about uh, 11 to it was 11 to 14 I think I think it was about 12th I think that's where they are now I think yeah well no we'll, what we will be doing next week in the next podcast is we'll be reacting or taking a look at our predictions at the start of the year and see how many we got right and Melbourne was a big one because I think that a few people did think that would be a bit of a slider. I did pick them to drop out of the four, so but I didn't pick them to drop this far. And I mean, look, granted they've had a lot of injuries to key oh, players. Yeah. Well, they had <laughs> not as bad as some other clubs, though, which is where we're kind of kind of sitting to now. Um, Melbourne, the culture is being questioned. Nearly every single player is on the trade table. Or trade rumor or whatever. <laughs> I think Max Scorn's the only one hasn't been called as a he trade rumor. He's the only one that signed. <laughs> yeah, he signed for a couple of years this week. So, so yeah, I mean, basically since the last podcast we did, I recorded it on Monday last week. It's been absolute chaos on the Melbourne <laughs> Demon front. Um, we've heard the likes of Viney, Oliver's been linked to bloody every single club in the AFL. Petrarca's not happy. He wants to go. Neil Bullen's out the door to South Australia. <laughs> yeah, that was that was weird. I, I, and he played this week as well, and he's yeah. playing next week yeah. as well. 
they do say it's family reasons, so hopefully that's all okay. Um, I, I love how, on, I think it was on um, one of the footy shows, I think it was Footy Classified, um, Sam McClure was sitting there and he's like, do you really think it's a family issue? It's like, bro, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> shut up, bro. You fucking absolute wank stain. Like, we don't need to hear about your opinion on fucking, or do we think he's just lying? How do you fucking know? Stupid. Typical cunt. journalist trying to make up a story. Yeah, do right? you think I, it's, a, it's funny, isn't it, saying, oh, do you think, like, just putting it out there, it's like, oh, he's going to leave just because it's, it's happening in Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> so, fuck me. Uh, absolute joke. But I mean, if those three players right now, do you think any of them will be outside of Melbourne next year? I w- to be honest, the Viney one will be interesting because of um, was it Todd Viney being at North Melbourne? Yeah, is it that's a- an interesting one. And he's um, only got one more year left in his contract. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Petrarca, that'd be fucking stupid to get rid of him. I think he'd give Oliver another go because he's been injury injured all season, pretty much. Well, he had a fucking he, dreadful off season. Yeah, and he, yeah, and he didn't have a preseason. Yeah. And Neil Bullen, I don't... It, yeah, that'll happen. It'll be interesting which port, uh, which um, club will go at him. Because obviously the Crows are looking at a lot of players this year and so are Port Adelaide. Yeah, well, I mean, what is he? He's kind of, you know, a... Hybrid midfield forward, you would say. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I think at a club like Port Adelaide, you probably he's probably a forward, forward mid. Mm, yeah. at, at Adelaide, he's probably a midfield mid, a midfield forward. Sorry. Yeah. So it, it kind of just depends on where he wants to I where, think where he wants to play. If it's me, I'm a Port supporter. I think he um, the Crows will want him more. I think the Crows will want him more than the, um, than the Power will. Yeah. Well. I mean, do you, like, you heard Neil Bullen wants to leave Melbourne. Did you, were you like, oh, that's a really good get for us? Or do you think, like, oh, you know, if he's there and he wants to come to us, that'd be great? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. I thought it's another midfielder that good for some depth. Yeah. He can play a bit of half forward. And he can bring the pressure in the forward line. Yeah. But um, with the tools of the fact is that you've, we've got four of them. Dixon, Marshall, Lord, George Yardis. Like and Radical Lear as well for five. And Finlayson. And Finlayson. Well. You got six there. You can't put them all in. Yeah. So we can use them as trade. Well, like Dixon, he's got maybe this year, maybe next year, but I don't think. Yeah, if I was Port Adelaide, I would 100% be offering Melbourne. If if New Bullen was wanting to go to Port, give him one of the like older ones, like yeah, Finlayson I, or maybe. Well, I I Finlayson's, Finlayson's like unlikely to go, but yeah, maybe offer up Dixon. Yeah. If, if they want it, because they need a forward. Yeah. They've always been begging for one, so. Yeah. Give him another year up there, that, oh, well, up to Melbourne. Yeah, if you got, but and it will be interesting. Yeah, I mean, I personally think it's a lot of noise and not much um, truth to it. To be honest, I love how Tom Morris says he's a Melbourne supporter. Yeah. It's like, bro, how much of a Melbourne supporter could you fucking be? Mm. You absolute worm. I think that look, I think a lot of the time when there's um, when there's a a burn, there's fire or. You know, when there's a little bit of evidence, there is something behind it. I do get that argument. Um, I don't think that's always the case, though. Mm. And I think that... Um, I think a lot of this is a lot of just talk. Now, I think that, like, the likes of Petrarca being unhappy, I mean, I don't think that's a necessarily a wrong thing, to, uh, wrong thing um, reported. Because I think that he would be expecting that Melbourne would be up there again. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, I think they also dealt with his injury pretty poorly. He's had a pretty tough couple of months he's never really had an injury since like his first couple of years of being a draftee mm. he's always been very consistent um and i mean the oliver stuff at the start of the season to now obviously he's been a very big um point in front of the melbourne football club for a lot of the year it's always been a massive talking point well pretty much every press conference is like uh, this is the first one is when's oliver going is he going where is he going to yeah exactly i mean how are you supposed to get out of it? I mean, mm. that's kind of what you get when you're a Victorian club. You're one of the big ones. Um, well, well, based on their crowd numbers at the MCC, yeah, I will well, say that would be. But. Yeah, and I mean, that, that's another <laughs> thing as well. Does Christian Petrarca want... To, I mean, he's he was playing, what, three, four years ago. He was playing in front of 50,000 crowds every week at the very least mm. um, when he was playing at the MCG. Now they can barely fill up 20K. Yeah, that's... And that's, yeah. that's just embarrassing for the Melbourne fans. I mean, you can make the argument of like, oh, Melbourne fans aren't true footy fans and whatever, I don't know. Um, I mean, we live in South Australia, we've gone to Melbourne and it's such a footy-centric area, mm. obviously. But I-, I can't tell you, like outside of going to a Melbourne game, 
when I've seen a Melbourne jumper around, to be honest. I don't think there's, I don't know many Melbourne fans. I don't know, um, don't see them very often around. No. Um, so I, I think that's another one as well. But yeah, I mean, I can see the point of like Petrarca being a little bit unhappy. I don't think he's going to go. No. I don't think he'll retra- request a trade. I think he's just a bit unhappy about how the season's gone, mm. which is probably what most of the Melbourne team would be thinking. Yeah. And I'm sure that if, if Max Gorn now comes out and says he's had a disappointing year, it's probably true. Because yeah. let's be honest, they have. they No one besides me <laughs> predicted them to finish this low on the ladder. Yeah. <laughs> and look, I mean, they've had to... I mean, obviously, you went around caught with a crowbar and whacked a couple of them in the legs just to make sure they were falling <laughs> down the ladder. Well, I didn't, uh, to be honest, I didn't expect them... Like, besides Oliver, really, I didn't expect them to get this, this injury-prone team. At but, the moment, I mean, the reason why, though, I think you said it at the start of the season is because where are they going to get their goals from? Yeah. Which, I mean, it's a point that, you know, they haven't really had a lot of injuries up forward, let's be honest. Mm. And there was a lot of, there's a few games this year where Petrarca, when he was fit, he was the one who got them over the line. Yeah. So when he's about not, not, not there and um, they've, they've still not been able to find a, an avenue to goal, like more than Fritch, really, or Pickett occasionally. You know, Petty's had a shocking year up forward. Mm. I can't believe he was offered a million dollars by the Crows. That mm. was the almighty bullet dodge of the century. Mm. That was bigger than Donald Trump. That fucking dodge from the Adelaide <laughs> Crows. Mm. But, I mean, to question their culture, I love um, them saying, oh, you know, Melbourne are all about like saying, yeah, culture is great, whatever. It's because every single week the media is questioning their culture, they yeah. have to come out and say it. Well, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. you know, I, I probably think there's a huge issue at Melbourne right now. I don't think it's very. I don't think you can sit there and say that they're they're going well. Mm. I, I think that's fair enough. I think, but I think a lot of it is the media have seen a team that's down, a team that's been up for quite a while now, mm. and they're on the way down. And, and I think in, that in, in, in Melbourne, they're yeah. in Melbourne. So yeah, I mean it's a little bit. Of, Richmond probably have been falling under the radar a bit this year. They've been able to get away with it because of all the injuries that have had out of yeah. Muse as a new coach as well. Mm. So he's been able to get away with it a little bit. Melbourne, Simon Goodwin's been there for a while now. They're expected to be up in the top four, top eight this year. Mm. They've always been a very good defensive side. So they've always thought of, well, at least they'll be able to defend scores. So, yeah, when they've dropped down so far and they've got players like Petrarca and Oliver who have been who are stars of the game at their best, um, I understand why there's talking around them so much. Yeah. But I think a lot of it is a lot of it is just noise. Yeah. And just nothing. But who knows? Let's let's move on, hey. So let's move into a little bit of all Australian talk. So we haven't really talked about the all Australian this year. We've both done. Uh, we both had a look at it today. In fact, I was doing it at work. Sorry, <laughs> my <laughs> boss is listening. But um, we've both gone through our. Uh, we both went through the predictor. Just having a look at a couple of the players that um are they are expecting apparently the AFL or whoever put it up to get picked in the All Australian squad this year, All Australian team, the twenty two. Do you think they should make it twenty three now that we've got a sub? Uh, no, but if they make it a twenty, like well, they're saying that there's going to be a five benches and no sub. Mm. I think then that's when they have to make it twenty three. But now I think it's twenty two. Like you're not going to have the, like to put them as a sub is just stupid in my opinion. It's probably it's just another midfield spot, yeah, really. Exactly. That's what the so, interchange is now. Yeah, basically. it's just pretty much, and so yeah, so. To make it the sub, no. Next year or whenever they make it a full 23, no sub. Yeah, I think that's when they should make it a 23. Yeah. All right. Well, look, we'll go through our predictions for our All-Australian teams for 2024. Now, of course, these are we're actually leaking the actual team. Well, I am anyway. I don't know what you've done. But I'm, I'm leaking the team. Um, so what I've gone at the full back line, I've gone Luke Ryan, Alex Pierce, Nick Blakey. At half back, I've gone Max Holmes. Harris Andrews, Lockie Whitfield. Across the centre, on the two wings, I've gone Errol Goulden, Nick Martin. And in the centre, I've gone Marcus Bontempelli. At half forward, I've gone Dylan Moore, Charlie Curnow, and Brent Daniels. In the full forward line, I've gone Tyson Stengel, Jesse Hogan, Joe Danaher. In the in the guts, the followers, I've gone the Ruckman as Rowan Marshall, Isaac Heaney as the Ruck Rover, and Nick Dacos in the um, Rover's spot. And on the interchange, I have gone... Patrick Cripps, Zach Merritt, Dane Zorko, and Zach Butters. So that is my 22. We'll go through yours. What are you going with? So at full back, I've got... Uh, well, full back one. I've went um, Andy McGrath, Harris Andrews, and Nick Blakey. Half back, I've went Jordan Clark, Jerry McGovern, and Dane Zorko. In the centre, uh, I've went Errol Goulden in the guts. So 
uh, Nick Dacos, and on the other wing is Paddy Cripps because he always plays there. Um, Since when? When does Patrick Cripps fight on the wing? <laughs> Do you really think that they're going to pick the two wing when they get? Oh, you're year? going. Oh, I'm, okay. This is how they're going to do it. Um, on the half forward line, I've went Sam Flanders, uh, Jesse Hogan, and Isaac Heaney, and at full forward um, Dylan Moore, Charlie Kerno, and Josh Tracy. And the followers and the ruckmen are going Chester and Jerry, Zach Merritt, and Marcus Bontempelli. And on the bench, I've went with uh, Lockie Neal, Hayden Young, Adam Trelaw, and Sam Walsh. Well, we have gone with a lot of differences. I didn't really see this coming. Okay, so in the back line, I've got Luke Ryan, Nick Blakey, Alex Pierce, Max Holmes, Lockie Whitfield, and Harris Andrews. So how many of them have you got? What, so two? I've got... Uh, you got Harris yeah. Andrews. Harris Andrews and Nick Blakey. Yeah. You got Lockie Whitfield in your team? No. Okay. That's a pretty big one. I think Lockie Whitfield's probably been the, one of the better halfbacks this year. Um, the reason why I've kind of gone with this sort of back line is um, I'm looking at it like this is a bit of Bashi Lee a team, mm. but also... Well, that's um, stupid because they never pick it as a team. <laughs> well, they, I think they did pretty well last year, I'm going to be honest. Well, they picked two wingmen, which was a bit surprising. Yeah, that's where I've kind of gone with the wing as well. I think Max Holmes has had a very underrated year for the Cats. I mm. think he's played very well off of halfback. He's been a pretty good ball user. Um, I'm unsure if they will pick him as the halfback player, but for me personally, I think he was def- I think he was second best. I think there was a couple of um, notable misses, though. I think Dan Houston's pretty close to it. He didn't get it. Dane Zorko, I do have. He's on the bench. But um, the reason why I haven't put Dane Zorko on the actual team is because I think if this was to be an actual 22, I think that Dane Zorko could play anywhere. Yeah. So he could be in the guts. He could play as a small forward if he had to. Mm. So that's why I've kind of gone with that. As the full back line, Luke Ryan, I think that he's the best small defender at the moment. Um, the reason I would have put Brendan Saskovich uh, just behind him, but he wasn't even in the uh, predictor to choose from. Mm. Um, and he's had a pretty. Is it peaked in the forty? Or has it even been the forty? Hasn't been decided yet, has it? Yeah, because they do it before the in the week off, don't they? Oh no, they haven't. No, no. So this is just like. But I don't think they will pick him because the fact is he missed a bit of football this year. I, I think they said today, I did read that they have to play a minimum of 16 games. I don't. I think he's got close to that. I think he played a bit more than 16, but I don't think he's played a lot. I think he, um, when they did play really badly, Brisbane, he wasn't very... He was yeah. better when they were better. Yeah, when they were better, he was better. Well, I think that Luke Ryan's a very good small def- a good defender on the smalls, but also can play tall as well. Mm. Similar to Nick Blakey as well. Mm. So, but I think that he's a lot more of a runner. So I'm not really picking Nick Blakey on the side that he can match up on someone, but he can if he has to. Yeah, that's kind of where I've gone for on that front. On the wings, I've gone Golden and Martin. D'Ambrosio was very close to getting this spot on the wing. If if they go with like a, the two wingmen that they should be doing, well, like they did last year. Mm. But I think the reason why I picked Nick Martin is because he kicks goals. He's a good two way runner for Essendon, and um, he's a he's a very good runner. So mm. a very good runner, very good. Usually a pretty good user with the footy. That's kind of what I've gone with you. And Errol Golden, pretty obvious. I think everyone's going to have him as a wing spot. And uh, Mark Sponson fairly just got him in the guts, basically, because I think he deserves a 22 spot. Yeah. Um, in the forward line, I've gone Dylan Moore, Brent Daniels, and Charlie Kernow as half forwards. And then Tyson Stengel, Hogan, and Joe Danaher. Dylan Moore and Brent Daniels, I think, have had very good years. Absolutely insane. Especially Brent Daniels. His end of the year has been brilliant. Mm. So I think that's definitely going to get extra marks for him. Dylan Moore... It's insane that he was on the rookie list for Hawthorne a couple of years well, ago. Well, he was nearly delisted at the end of 2020. Yeah. Now he's the vice captain. He's had a massive year for the mm-hmm. Hawks. He's led from the front. Even though even James Sisley was the captain, probably had a little bit of a downer year, I would say, mm-hmm. compared to his year before when he did get the All-Australian spot. But Dylan Moore's really lifted. And I think he's been that sort of general up forward when you know they've got the sparks of Ginevan, Watson... Uh, Connor McDonald, he's definitely that one who's just going to give you, you know what he's going to give you every week. Mm. So that's where I've gone for. And Charlie Kerno obviously picks it centre half forward, I think. Really. You I pick would... your two best. Um, well, he's Top. still second in the Carmen. He is still second. Yeah, exactly. And Tyson Stengel may be a bit of a surprise to some people. He has kicked 40 goals this year. He's been very good for the Cats. Mm. Um, may have been, yeah, I think some people would be a bit surprised with that one. But I think that Tyson Stengel's been the best small forward, like, just small forward. I don't know if that's if that makes any sort of sense. But basically, like he's been the best forward you kick to as a small. Mm. He's a good crummer. I think that's why he's there. Jesse Hogan. He's gonna win the Coleman. He's had a great year. Yeah. And I mean, uh, Joe Danaher. 
I toss this one up between him and Jamara. Jamara Eagle Hagen. He's had a very good end of the year. But I just think that Joe Danaher, even though he didn't have a very good week last week against the Pies, I, I do think he's had a very good year. Mm. That's why I went with him. In the ruck, I went Rowan Marshall. Tristan Cherry was my second choice. He definitely would have been there. But I just thought Rowan Marshall, he's been insanely good this year. And I think... I don't... Look, I mean, I, I, Harry Sheezer was close to getting into this team for me as well. But um, for me personally, I just think Rowan Marshall's the one. Um, and Isaac Heaney and Dacos picked themselves. Now, the bench may be a bit of a tough one for some people. So, a lot of midfielders have missed. So, I've gone Cripps, uh, Merritt, and Butters, along with Dane Zorko, which I mentioned previously. Now, I've left out Hayden Young. I left out Lockie Neal. I left out Trelaw, Walsh, Sheasel, McCluggage, Sarong, Tom Green, and Chad Warner. So, there's a lot of midfielders to choose from. Mm. I picked Patrick Cripps because I think that this team does have to have a captain. I think that he would be the captain. I think he has done had a very good year. He kind of started it slow, but since um, oh, mid year, I think that when, even when they have had been poor, he has been Carlton's best by a mile. Mm. So I think I think Patrick Cripps deserves his spot. Zach Merritt, especially at the start of the year, he was immensely good for the uh, Bombers. He was leading from the front. He was a great captain, probably the best captain of the year midway through the season. Um, so that's why he's been picked. And I think that he's, even now when Essendon are playing quite poorly, I still think he's been their best. And Zach Butters, I think a couple of weeks ago, I don't know if I would have picked him, but in the last five weeks, I think he's definitely um, rose his game to what the power of needed. Mm. So that's why he's been picked. Um, to be honest, if I had to change one or two, I would probably put Hayden Young in the team. I think that he's been really good this year, probably for Zach Butters. And Lockie Neal probably would come in for Zach Merritt. That, I think that Zach Merritt one would be Lockie Neal or Adam Trelaw. That would probably be the swap. That's kind of what I'm looking at. I understand that people would probably think differently. That's completely fine. That's kind of what the reasons why I've picked those ones. What are you... What Maybe explain a couple to me. Because you said Andrew McGrath. That's a big one. Because I think at the start of the year, he definitely would be. But I feel like... I looked at him a bit, but I was like... I think the second half of the year has been a bit poor. Yeah, I think... I still think he's a very... Good leader in that team uh, for Melbourne, uh, Epson, sorry. But I think he, when he was doing well, so were Essendon. And I think he was very underrated at for what um, Essendon were doing all season. He was very underrated, I thought. And I think he is a very good defender. And he goes very uh, much under the radar. So, yeah. um, I think. Well, look, Jeremy McGovern, I've gone Alex Pierce as like my key. Defender Jeremy McGovern had a pretty poor year. The West Coast Eagles. He's been back though, so I think it showed if he was him and Barats being there, they would have. If they, if it was like last year, the last couple of years when he had when they both haven't been there, they would have lost every, nearly every game. They yeah. would have lost nearly every game again. So it shows how good he really is and how much they need him in that team. Yeah. So you don't think that West Coast could use him as trade bait in the next what, no. in the trade period? They need to keep him. They need to keep him. If yeah. they're going to lose Barats, which everyone thinks they're going to, yeah. they need to keep McGovern. Yeah. Um. So we'll go to the half forward line for me because I had Flanders and Heaney because yeah. well, well for for one thing Flanders has played pretty much everywhere, so you could probably put him on the bench. But I thought um, at the start of the year when he was playing a bit more half back, half back. He can pretty much play anywhere. So I kind of just put him in the team because I didn't really think that there was a many other forwards, really big forwards that really generated the position, really. I didn't think Stengel d- deserved it. I didn't think I didn't think Brett Daniels deserved it because at the start of the year, I think he played pretty well, but a lot of the other smalls played pretty well as well for the Giants. So I didn't think his influence came in until half the bye. And like the fact is like Dylan Moore, he's he could play probably there, but I thought Dylan Moore in the forward line was more suitable. Isaac Heaney, well, even though he's played the guts pretty much ninety percent of the year, I think playing in forward the last couple of years, you might just be able to slot him right in the half forward line. Yeah. Um, Josh Tracy's a big big call. I thought yeah, I but I think the last couple of weeks, I think well with him being out, I think it's shown that they do need him in that team. Yeah. And he is a good contested mark. It doesn't matter where he's on the field. He can take a contested mark. And at the very least, he brings it to ground. Yeah. Yeah. So, the what? I mean, you've called Tristan Cherry as your ruckman. I picked Rowan Marshall. So, Tristan Cherry. I think you just have to give it to him. I think... I don't care what anyone says. 
I'm taking this as fantasy as well. You gotta put him in that team. He yeah. took. He can just dominate anywhere, yeah. and it doesn't. I think the fact is that she's was playing better. I think um, you're looking at that midfield of the North Melbourne. If he's not in that team, Tristan Jerry, I don't think he, they have the same influence they do as the, the, that North Melbourne midfield does. Yeah. So I think he has helped a lot of the younger midfielders develop this year, like the Sheasel, Wardlaw, Powell, um, Davis Uniac as well. So I think. Mm. I think that's a big reason as well why a lot of those North Melbourne players are excited about the future. Like, Davis Uniac didn't want to leave anymore and that. So I think that's a good... I, 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 I Cherry was my second choice. I just don't think they're going to pick two Ruckman. No, 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 I, I think, think they're, they're Rowan yeah. Marshall. For me, yeah. personally, I think he was um, the choice for me. But yeah. the bench is pretty much exactly the opposite of what I had. Yeah. So I had Cripps, Merritt, Butters, and Zorko. Uh, you have Zorko, but you've gone with four midfielders. From the year. Yeah. Neil, Young, Chaw, and Walsh. Yeah. I think Walsh is that one that could not be in the team. Probably because he did miss a few games. He didn't... I think Cripps' influence is more influential in that team. So, obviously, he's in the 22, in the midfield of the Cripps. But, uh, you're looking at it. Walsh, he's probably one of my... In my team that's not going to make it, if it's a, if there is anyone. Chaw, I think he's had a very fuck, uh, very good year, and if he's not in that team, I don't know what he has to do to make it. Really, yeah, he's never made an Australian team yeah. in his career, even though he's been very good for so long. Yeah, uh, so, Hayden Young being the most damaging player in the last seven or, in the last, since the, since the buy. Yeah, Hayden Young was very close for me. Mm. Um, I would have had, like I said, I would have had him in probably for Zach Butters because mm. I feel like that's like. My spark midfielder. Mm. Butters is like the spark midfielder who comes on. I get the Hayden Young's like that spark. He's a very good ball user. And I think he's definitely... He was very close. To, if I had to pick a sub, he would be my sub. Yeah. I think if there's a more damaging player at the moment, he's in the top five of the most damaging players in the game. Yeah. And Lockie Neal, I think it was more of the fact is that he's very close to a brown line. And there's, there's only... You think the, he can go through? I think he'll go close. And I think that... There's only ever been one person that's missed the All Australian that's on the brown line, and that was Mark, uh, Matt Prittis. Yeah, so I don't and obviously Lockie Neal last year. <laughs> yeah, Lockie Neal last year. So imagine if he did it twice; that'd be funny. <laughs> that would be yeah, funny. Yeah. So that's my twenty-two. But. So yeah, I mean, I think look, if I'm going to be honest, if I had to pick one player that I'm very surprised that you picked, even though I love the player, is Josh Tracy. I think that. There's no way in hell he makes the team. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry to any Fremantle fans out there. I think he's had a brilliant year. And I would love him in my team. I can't see him making the team. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. But it would be... I would love to see him get a jacket. Mm. That would be awesome. Anyway, let's move on. We'll talk about the Flog of the Week. So this is a pretty quick one because um, my brother's been... Messaging I have not. He did mention him earlier in the episode. So um, it's going to go to Josh Rochelle. And... Look, I don't really like giving it to players unless they've done something really, really bad. And I'm not saying that he's done something bad here, but... <laughs> and I don't really like giving it to a player on the fact of his celebrations and their antics because I do think um, the players need to have personality. And I think that's great for the game. And for, like, we've seen the likes of Ginevan, a couple of Hawthorne players, uh, Sydney, Justin McInerney. Um, players with personality bring a lot of like hype and excitement mm. to the games. So I think that's fair to say. Josh Rochelle over the week before the showdown, he was talking about how Port fans don't have any teeth or uh, don't have less teeth. And look, so from South Australia, I've seen a few toothless Port fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When we were getting smashed by 112 points at the Adelaide over against Port Adelaide, I was counting a couple of like, how many, how many, how many teeth <laughs> that Port Adelaide fans got. So I mean, look, it's a funny joke. Um, I thought it was pretty funny. And I, I don't have an issue with him saying that. And even in the game, I didn't really have an issue with him um, making that celebration. Mm. I know some Port fans did, and I know you probably thought it was a bit up yours, bro. I thought it was a bit... In the time of the game, I think it was, what, second quarter? Yeah, it was the second, second quarter. Second quarter. You've only, you're not really up by much. You're not really dominating the game. And he wasn't either. He wasn't either. Was it the right moment to do it? Probably not. I think in the heat of the moment, I don't mind it. Yeah. My issue is, though, I th he had 10 disposals in the game. He kicked one goal, which was that goal. Um, he pulled out of a contest as well, which is something that he's been called, called out for in the past. My issue is, you have to back it up. Mm. And if you don't back it up, even if the, the Crows lose the game, I don't have an issue with that. You've got to have an impact. 
yeah. better than that. Especially when Rankin came off the ground. You are the match winner for the Crows. We've seen him do it last year. A even, couple of this, times. even this year during the Essendon game, he kicked the match winner, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Well, he kicked one of the close, one of the goals to get them back into it. Yeah. Um, he didn't do it. And mm. he wasn't sighted, basically, throughout the second half, I don't think. Um, you saw the game a lot more. I watched watching the other game. But you, you can do that celebration. You can do all the kinds of things you want. You can rile up the crowd. I don't mind that. I think that Jack Ginevan does it very well. But Jack Ginevan also backs it up. I think he's, I think Ginevan learned from last year and the year before that that you got to pick your moment when you do it. you got to pick your moment. He was dominating against Collingwood when, when Ginevan did it against Hawthorne. Yeah. He was dominating. He, he played the best game of his career. Yeah. Rochelle was not playing his best game ever. And he was not playing well. Yeah. And he hasn't played well pretty much all year. Yeah. And I think, as well, the Crows are fucking fourth to bottom. They're in the bottom four. Mm. They, they were in the bottom four before the game, too, I believe. Um, yeah. Yeah, they yeah, would have been. Yeah. They're in the bottom four. This team was supposed to be challenging for finals. Mm. Pick your moment a bit better. That's yeah. just me. Now, again, look, I think... I don't like calling out a player for it because I think that there's a lot of other issues. And look, if Tom Morris didn't have a fucking vote already, a nomination this year, he would have been getting it this week for the Melbourne reporting. Because I think a lot of it is fucking nothing. <laughs> there's a lot of fucking bullshit tabloid crap. Mm. Which he called out a couple of a couple of months ago. Mm. Which I think we actually gave him a nomination for. So, yeah. I, Josh Rochelle, he's not going to win the flog of the year for that. But he's, no. it's a bit of a flog act. You, know, it's, you need to pull your head in just a little bit. I'm not going to go Kane Corns and say you're an embarrassment. Because I think the whole club's been pretty fucking poor this year. It's not just him. Mm. But, yeah. I mean, you've got to pick your moment a bit better. And your team is fourth bottom on the ladder when they're... Ex- I mean, if it was, a, if it was Harley Reid, considering West Coast to 16th on the ladder, a team lower, I would expect that more from him. And I would be okay with it more from him than Josh Rochelle. Because West Coast, you expected them to be there. The Crows have been bottom of the ladder. They're, f- they're 15th on the ladder. They mm. were expected to make finals. Mm. And they've dropped. Yeah. And I mean, probably in the next couple of weeks, we'll talk about the teams that have been eliminated from finals and that, and talk about their years and that. Give like pass and fail marks. The Crows have absolutely failed. That's an, it's an F. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing but... They yeah. were expected to make top eight at the very least. Even I think I had them near the four. I think mm. I had them in fifth at the start of the year. Mm. And that was like a pretty... A lot of people would have had that thought of like the big high flyers this year, mm. but they've failed. And yeah. a team like Hawthorne, who started their rebuild after them, mm. have jumped them yeah. in spades. So mm. yeah, I think look, that's what, kind of what we're sitting for on that front. I did think it was a bit funny. Did you see that? The fact is that did you watch like listen to the game? Or no, right? I didn't want this. So um, what was funny is that Ben Dixon was on the boundary line and. Um, during the um, during the game, they start uh, port supporters were throwing you know the, the lollies. The oh, the, lo- the lollies. teeth lollies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't think that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't mind that. I saw before the game as well that one of the port fans was walking around with a bag of yeah, um, yeah. Uh, teeth lollies when Josh Rochelle was walking off the ground. I thought that was pretty good. I don't mind the theatre of it. No, I actually don't mind the talk before the game as well. well I actually think that actually brings it to the brings more atmosphere. And port Adelaide were doing it the last yeah. game. So showdown. the thing is that. Have no no one, no one's learned. It would be interesting in the next showdown. If you shut up, you perform well. <laughs> it's amazing. Port supporters, the Port players were doing it before the last two or three showdowns. Yeah, and they lost. weren't backing it up. They lost, and they didn't back it up. Rochelle does it this week. They lose. Yeah, maybe just shut up and never say anything. <laughs> don't say anything until half of their game. Yeah, and then after the game, you can have your have your you know oh, a couple of Port fans or a couple of teeth flying on the foot on the ground. <laughs> yeah, on yeah. the ground. Well, you got to think also. They had the chance. For, Adelaide to finish the the Port's top four aspirations yeah. by just winning that game. Yeah, and they didn't. And they played well in the first half. They should. Yeah, have I, I was like, oh, here we go. We're going to actually lose this. I should have. I did tip Port, so that was a. I was thought, like, oh, here we go. This, this yeah, so going to bite me in the ass. But <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I think the Dan Hughes didn't respond. Was the way that. Yeah, I think that was that took the, the Crows off their game. The Crows took that yeah off their game. Some of the senior players went off the went off the rocker and. Poor, sport, uh, poor players put their mind back in the game. Yeah, which I think was a good idea, and I mm. think that that's well, show it's, maturity. And it, yeah, it's not really what poor sport players normally do. Normally, if they get get into a fight, they start they keep going. So with that being said, guys, let's get to our tips for the final round of the season, round twenty four. Massive couple of games coming up, of course. 
finals deciding games. So let's start on Friday night. I have tipped Collingwood over the Demons. On Saturday afternoon, I've picked the Cats to beat the Eagles, the Gold Coast Suns to beat the Tigers, Hawthorne to beat North Melbourne, Brisbane to beat the Bombers, and Sydney to beat the Crows. And on Sunday, the deciding couple of games, I have picked the Giants to beat the Bulldogs, the Blues to beat the Saints, and the Dockers to beat Port Adelaide. So who have you gone with this week? So on Friday night, I've went Collingwood over Melbourne. Saturday afternoon, I've went the Cats over the Eagles, the Suns over Richmond, Hawthorne over North Melbourne. And on Saturday night, I've went Brisbane over Essendon, the Crows over the Swans. On Sunday, I've went the Bulldogs over the Giants, uh, Carlton over St Kilda, and Frio over the Power. So we've got a couple of different ones this week. We'll start, I guess, right on Saturday night, the Swans versus the Crows game. That is at the SCG. Um, not really much to play for for either team. Sydney can't lose top spot. Almost a dead rubber, you would say. Is that kind of weighing on the Crows here? Yeah, and I know there's the, the, the pre-finals by. I think the Swans may rest a few. I think maybe a Taylor Walker either returns for his final game in retirement or he'll play next year, but he may come back this week and will help out the forward line. The Swans, they're not playing for anything. They've already got top spot. They don't want to risk an injury now. I wouldn't be surprised if Brody Grundy gets a rest. That's who I think may, may get a rest. Yeah, and that means Peter Adam comes in. Fuck. God <laughs> fuck it. He doesn't up. have a good record when he comes in for the Swans, does he? No. Well, last time he played was 112 point loss, and before that, I don't even remember the last time he played before that. But um, I kind of see where you're coming from. I do think Sydney may rest a player or two. I think that they won't bring back Chad Warner. I think there's no need. Mm. Or Tom Papley. I think Tom Papley is a 50 50. But I think there was a couple of good players from the Swans last week he played up forward like Cleary I think he played a really good game his mm. first like full game of footy I think he played quite well I think that Sydney can cover that for the week I just think that Sydney you can't tip against them here I think the Crows have had a pretty poor year Isaac Rankin will be out and I think that's a big loss for the Crows yeah. and I think that even though they've had a really poor week off, off uh, on the field I think the Crows they will probably respond in the first quarter as the Swans have been very good in the first quarter so they do need to fix that but I just have to pick the Swans here that's mm. kind of my thought process the going to Sunday first game is Western Bulldogs versus the Giants. What a massive game this is. So you've gone the Bulldogs, I've gone the Giants. So the Western Bulldogs have to win this game, basically, to secure a final spot. Why have you gone the Bulldogs here? Uh, because it is, for one reason, it is at Miles Stadium. It's in Ballarat. I just think that the Bulldogs are going to throw everything at them. The Giants pretty much have guaranteed top second or third. Yeah. So they know who they're playing. It just depends on... Do they want the, the home final? It's hard, it's really hard to pick this one because they're both... To be honest, the Bulldogs shouldn't be where they are. They should be higher on the ladder. But they've cost themselves at c crucial times in the year. I'm picking the Giants, though, basically on the fact they are in... They're the hottest team right now. Mm. I can't pick against them. I think they match up really well against the Bulldogs as well. I think that, obviously, Darcy had a massive game last week and filled his boots against North Melbourne with the seven goals. Mm. Jamara kicked three or four... Kicked three and... Norton he had a pretty quiet game on the goal front, but um, I think the Giants actually match up pretty well. Sam Taylor's there, Jack Buckley, probably the best um, duo defenders in the comp. So that's where I think they're going to be um, stronger. The midfield battle will be very interesting, mm. and if the Giants let, uh, if the Giants can get the ball forward enough, if Toby Green can finally get some form as well, he's got a pretty good record against the Dogs, I believe. So I think that he can hit some form in this game. And Brent Daniels, I think, is in the form of his career. And I think he's one of the most important players in the comp right now. Mm. So I think that you can't go past him. After that, we've got the Blues and the Saints. Um, this is, I think this is a bit of a danger game, to be honest. Yeah, I think St Kilda, they've played well the last couple of weeks. Mm. So do you think that you can see St Kilda winning this game? It would just depend on who comes back in for Carlton. Yeah. If... They're well. I'm not. I'm not expecting all of them to come back in. To be honest, they need most of them to come back in. I reckon. Yeah. Because St Kilda will give them a run. I mean, I think it was a very gutsy win from Carlton last week. I think mm. it was a very um, character building win. Can they do that two weeks in a row? That's the question. Because yeah. I mean, you can obviously talk about you know getting on the road, all the boys together, get build up for the hype, build up for one team, big big fight. We'll win this game. Can they do it again? That's the thing. If they don't have Mackay or Kerno, you know, if they're missing on these, like those two guys especially, St Kilda proved last week that if they can get the, if they can get their running game going, they're a pretty good team to watch. Well, you got to think they kick, they didn't kick a goal in the first quarter against Geelong. Yeah. Then they kicked over a hundred points. Yeah. So you got to think they can, they can put the, the score on the board pretty quickly. Yeah. They just haven't been able to do it for 10, 10 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe so, longer than that. I mean, look, I have to pick Carlton here. Mm, I think yeah. you can't pick St Kilda. Um, that's just... I think it's only on the fact of, like, you, I can't pick the Saints here. 
Mm. The, the Blues are the team on further up. I think that they've got so much to play for here. They're not a, a guaranteed spot just yet. So I think that, that's the, really the only reason why I'm picking yeah. Carlton here. And then the final game of the se- of the minor rounds in the season, and what a game it is. Fremantle against Port Adelaide. Frio have to have results go their way to make this game um, relevant for them. And we have actually both picked Fremantle over Port Adelaide here. Mm. So is this a similar sort of like a dead rubber to um, Port Adelaide here? Because, I mean, they can't fall any further than third. So it yeah. just depends on if they want a home final. That and I, I just don't trust their back line. I think that if Josh Tracy comes back in for the Dockers and Sean Darcy, if either of them come back in... Surely they just play Tracy on one leg if he's not that... If well, he's, if, if he's they need to enough. win, they're going to play him. They yeah. have to play him. I reckon they have to play him. If they need to win, the only game that will be going with Carlton, yeah. Well, if the, if the Bulldogs lose as well against the Giants, and they yeah. can jump them as well. So they might just have to win. And if they have to win... They'll throw everything at them. And they're lucky it's at home. Port, I don't really trust them. In, even though they have had good run, it's very hard to trust them. Yeah, I think that Port Adelaide has just always been a hard team to trust really for a yeah. very long time. Um, I'm going on Fremantle. Basically, on they've got they've got, a, they've got everything to play for. They haven't played poorly the last couple of weeks. They've just been pipped at the post, basically. Mm. Against the Cats, they were in front for a lot of that game. They just didn't burn able to hold on. Against the Giants, they were with them for the majority of the contest, and the Giants' quality just shone through late, and Jesse Hogan just got If it wasn't them. for Jesse Hogan, they would win that game. Yeah. So, I'm picking Fremantle on the fact that I think they're due for a win. And look, at the point... Look, if it's a dead rubber... Um, I don't know how Fremantle will perform, so that would be an interesting one. At this stage, I just I think Port Adelaide as well are going to take the foot off the pedal just a little bit. It's after a showdown as well as a pretty yeah, physical that's also, showdown. That's also a reason that, yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of where I'm looking for on that. Um, at this stage, though, if our tips go the way that we think, I have got the Bulldogs missing the finals and Fremantle making it, and you have got the Bulldogs making the finals and Fremantle not making it. So, what a crazy um, final round we've got coming up. We do have an AFL tipping comp to take a look at. One more round to go. I almost got the highest. I did get equal highest, but I had a really good run at the start of the week. Um, Looking at it, though, the top of the table in the AFL tipping comp is Brandon S. He leads by eight tips on anyone in the comp. He leads by, uh, on Paul. You're actually in second. I was Um, so close to beat if... The, if, you, Sunday, if Sunday was diff, um, different, because they but the top two I looked tipped the West Coast Eagles, and I hit Carlton. Yeah. Well, if we look at it right now, that was a that was an interesting one because that's really the only one you had. Because I mean, I don't know why you. I know that we're, Carlton had a lot. Yeah, of, I know. That's a pretty tough call. The showdown as well. A lot of people picked the Crows. You picked Port Adelaide. Um, I picked Collingwood. Obviously, I think it was not the only one in the whole league. I may have been the only yeah, one in the whole league were. to pick Collingwood. Oh. I know two people did. Mm. Oh, thanks for getting my hopes up. Um, yeah, it was a very interesting round. It broke up a little bit. Um, but yeah, Brennan S, it doesn't really matter now. He's got it pretty much locked up. I mean, he's basically the Sydney Swans at this point. Mm. You know, there's a chance that they could get knocked off if they lose like 20, 13% or something. But he's basically got it locked up now. I know he's a pretty frequent watcher of the channel, so he'd be pretty happy with that. He will be winning a prize. We are giving away because of the BR designs. We don't really have that at the moment. So we'll just give away a $250 gift voucher to the AFL store, I think. Probably fair enough. Yeah. Um, we'll be doing the same for our AFL Fantasy Chat, which we'll actually get into right now for the AFL Fantasy League. So taking a look at the AFL Fantasy um, over the weekend, I scored pretty well. I scored 2,366, which was ranked 12,000 in the um, AFL Fantasy, which is probably my best um, finish of the year. Had a couple of good performances. Michael Spontempelli with my captain, 117, take that 235. Uh, 234, sorry. Rocky Whitfield came in. He got 115. Nick Martin, 121. Nick Dacos, 116. Uh, who else do we have? Trelaw, 119. Zach Butters, 143. Jordan Dawson, 132. Tom Green, 122. Oh, holy shit, I did really well in the midfield. Only person who didn't get 100 was Sam Walsh. He got 97. Oscar McInerney got 111. Uh, who else do we have? Jai Caldwell, 119, along with Dylan Moore. And then that's pretty much all the good stuff. You'd be thinking, oh, God, how, how, how what's gone wrong mm. this week? Uh, Jordan Clark got 65. Hayden Young got 73. And, yeah, look, the two that I'm, I'm going to just leave here, Brody Grundy, 44. Uh, he needs a rest, I think, yeah. at this point. It's the end of... He needs to have a rest, I think. And Cam Rayner. Had a really good week the first week I got him. I'm like, oh, good. He's going to go for the rest of the season. They lose their last two games. He's played really poorly. Yeah. 
He got 58 last week. He got his lowest score of the year <laughs> this week, 38. And because of that, I actually lost my final. So I had a final up against this uh, Paul's Vikings. It was in the loser bracket, unfortunately, but I lost by 112 points. So it was a pretty big loss in the end. It wasn't exactly a close loss. He got a very nice score, so good on him. He goes into the grand final in the loser's bracket against K-Dog, the guy who beat you in the semi-final. Mm. So he's gone all the way up. Very good job from him. But we'll take a quick look at my trades. So really just play for nothing at the moment. Yeah. But still wanted to make my team pretty decent. I got rid of Fantasia, picked up Jackson Bins. That's just for money, I guess. And I got rid of Oscar McInerney this week, and I picked up Tristan Cherry. Oh, I did do that last week, but I had to change it because Harry Sheezer was out. Wish I didn't make that diff- that change, but it wouldn't have really mattered. Oscar McInerney only scored what twenty less than Cherry. If I made the, if I made the genius decision to get rid of Grundy and pick up Cherry, that would have been amazing. Yeah. But that was never going to happen. And yeah, that's kind of where I'm looking at right now. I may change the trade and get rid of Cam Rayner and pick up someone else, but I'm really not playing for anything right now. So that's kind of the end of the AFL fantasy year. Pre- looking at a little review of it, I had a pretty poor year. I'm going to be honest. Looking at my rank, so my rank for the whole year is 26,728, which is not very good. I've The highest I think I've ever finished is in the top 9,000, I think it was, mm. which I think could have been two years ago. I think it was two years ago I finished there. I remember for a quite a lot of the... Two years ago, I remember quite a lot of the year, I was actually in the top 5,000. And then I just had made some really poor trades, and that's cost me. Mm. That's probably the best I've ever done. But yeah, this, this year, I had a really poor start, and I've always been fighting back ever since. That's really been my issue. Because I remember... Right at the start of the year, I think it was in the first couple of weeks, I had a couple of really um, like dubious picks. I remember Jackson Mead was one, and I was like, "Oh, good, he's gonna." I feel like he's gonna have a breakout year. It just never really came came to until be, we did get rid of him. Yeah, until he got rid of him, and then he had a couple of good games. But yeah, that's kind of my AFL fantasy year. Pretty poor, um, I'll, I'll be honest. And yeah, I mean, let's have a look at you. What have you done? So last week, obviously, I was out of finals. So yeah, I'll you went out straight. Oh, so yeah, I was already out of my mate Monday. Um, so last week. It was pretty poor, to be honest. I got 2,267, which is 25,000 rank, which is pretty poor. Um, yeah, that's hard. That's double Sinclair the was about... Uh, Sinclair was a good player, 102. Bailey Dale was good because he was so shit for the first three quarters of that game. And then he scored like 40-odd in the last quarter <laughs> with a few uh, marker kicks. Um, Nick Martin and Bontempelli. Tom Green and Nick Dacos, the hundreds. Uh, Adam Trelaw, bringing him in pretty good this week. Uh, Tristan Jerry was um, well, pretty shit on his previous couple. Yeah, he could have been the first player ever to go four weeks in a row with 150 plus. But what did he get? 134. He got 122. Oh, as a captain. Oh, so he only scored 11 different Oscar Mac. Yeah, he got at least 130. Um, all my mid, all my forward line has done pretty well. Besides Brian Mines, he only got 72. I did keep Sheasel this week with the injury, and I got I took the um, Roberts um, score of 95. He did really well. I'm, yeah. actually, I'm a little bit annoyed that he didn't start at the start. He wasn't in a little bit earlier in the year. But I did get rid of... I did get Sicily last week, which was probably stupid when I should have got Nick Martin. Or, uh, Nick Newman, sorry. Yeah. So that was a bit stupid, but I didn't do that. But it doesn't really particularly matter since I didn't play anyone. Um, my trades this week were... Um, I got rid of Brody Grundy. I think that's just... Either he would get dropped... Rested. Rested. And <laughs> I think he's going to get dropped. Well, he's, get rested, he's getting yeah. dropped from my team. Yeah. And I got Ron Marshall, and I got rid of uh, Draper just for the cash to get Marsh- Marshall, and he just got a 200 player as a, in defence. Yeah, that's basically... So, yeah, that's basically all we've got. How about so, your year? Where'd you finish? What's so your at the moment, one more week to go, I have... Uh, twenty two thousand five eighty nine. So, so you are in front pretty of pretty poor, but uh, at the moment I'm being beating you by four thousand people. So, so what is your overall score throughout the year? So it's up the top in the middle. It's mm. literally right there. My score this year was forty six thousand five hundred and nineteen so far. Forty six thousand nine hundred and eleven. So I have to gain four hundred points this week from you to be yeah. not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. No, no, no but, way. No. Um, but that would be a very good comeback. I'd say that. <laughs> yeah. So it's been a poor year because last year I I think I cr- I was close to ten thousand. Yeah, I think the best year you had was last year. Yeah. So we both uh, had a pretty poor year. We talked up a big game at yeah. the start of the year. We haven't really we're pretty, up to the high. Yeah, it was kind of the same thing as you that I didn't start well either. Yeah. I was had a few bad games, uh, a few rounds. 
How did I start the year? I think yeah, I mean, must have a quick look. After oh, after the first round, I was actually in the fo- top five thousand. But straight after that, I went from in the f- top five thousand to thirty thousand within two. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, looking at it, I'm just looking at my team now. Um, I didn't actually have a bad start. It was probably just the end of the middle of the year, to be honest with you. Because I had a couple of really good players. Right. Like um, A lot much. of those players that I've got right now really lived out throughout the whole year. Like Nick Dacos has been around the whole time. Hayden Young, um, Bontempelli, Tom Green, Davies Uniac has been there the whole year. Nick Martin has been there the whole year. Brody Grundy has been there the whole year. Um, Sam Flanders as well. Yeah, so I mean, I've had some really good players that have stayed around the whole year. It's just... I think my trades have probably been the issue. I think, to be honest, I think where mine kind of stuffed up was because of the opening round, the buys that were great, that were great to start the year. I thought. Yeah, I don't really. I like just that. don't. Uh, it, it stuffed mine because obviously I had a few players that were out, and you got your only top, you got your top um, eighteen scores in those rounds, and yeah. that didn't help me. Yeah. That actually made it worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And they just, it just there wasn't a lot of big rookies that different yeah there weren't a lot of different rookies a lot of the same rookies for most people that's I agree and yeah those buys at the start of the year were really hard to navigate it was a very interesting it was a very different start it was a, to an it was a, yeah. fantasy year yeah. than it usually is and yeah I think that's probably where we all kind of fell off at the end but yeah I mean guys that's probably all we have for today's episode of the Boundary Riders podcast thank you for listening thank you for watching if you're watching over on YouTube make sure to like and subscribe we hit 1900 subscribers over the last couple of days, so we really do appreciate the support. Trying to hit two k before the end of the um, minor rounds is probably not going to happen. But if you want to, if you want to try and like make a bunch of Google um, Google accounts to get us up a hundred extra subscribers, that'd be we'd be appreciating <laughs> enough. Anyway, um, also thank you for um, following us over on Spotify. We've gained a few Spotify followers over the last couple of weeks, so I really do appreciate you guys checking us out over there. If you are over there, make sure to leave us five stars, and also make sure to follow, like I said, so you're notified on the podcast in the review that we drop every single week. And like we said, um, the 30th of August, so next Friday, so not the Friday coming, the Friday after we'll be doing a live stream. I think it's going to be 7 p.m. Melbourne time. Um, we'll put up a post on our socials, um, probably Instagram, whatever. We've already got a, a post on the community tab on the um, YouTube channel as well, so you guys are notified. And we'll also uh, have the, what is it, like a preview stream or whatever, so... You guys know exactly when it starts because that's what we'll be doing. I'm really excited for the stream. We're going to be doing it better, bigger and better this year. So we're going to have a bunch of awards given out. It's going to be really exciting. Keep an eye on the channel for the next couple of weeks as well, so when so you know exactly um, when it's coming and what's to what exciting stuff to come. But yeah, as we hit the finals, probably do a review every single week as well for the finals. Maybe do some votes. I don't really know how we're going to do it this year. We may have a Boundary Riders finals medal as well. We'll see what happens, but. Yeah, that's kind of what we're looking for, guys. Really appreciate the support over the year as well. We have grown like absolutely mental. I think we were like at 300 subscribers, 200 before the start of the year in the season. And now we're at 1,900 subscribers. So thank you so much for all the support over the um, AFL season. There will be a video essay coming out probably next Monday now. But it will be about the AFL MRO tribunal and the stuff throughout the year that's been pretty... Well, a bit of a joke, and I guess that's what <laughs> I am going to make that the title. The biggest joke in the AFL at the moment, or something like that. So, yeah, make sure to keep an eye out for that. Thank you for listening, guys. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you all next week. See you later, guys.